I'm very, very happy to be here. And I'm the father, proud father of Nino. <laughs> and I have always, you know, wanted to have a chance to talk about Nino. But I'm not in a state of good health that I can give you a good, good, good. A speech about Nino. You know, as a college professor for almost 50 years, you know, it is, the easiest thing for me is to give the speeches. You know. <laughs> <laughs> Especially these days, giving speeches for a class of 120 college students is not easy. But I managed to do that because myself and my family have always been into education. There was nothing more than education to be discussed as our family. My father was a great educator, and always he was wanted me to be a good educator. And in the course of my teaching at the university, and I have always been offered many, many, many good cho choices of different jobs and different more salary, more prestigious and everything. And I always wanted to be in, with the students and education, because that is what I really believe. That is what makes America great, and I have mentioned it 10 times in front of the student that if America is number one in the world, it is not because of the economy, it is not because of anything, it is not because of the army, it is because of having the best system of education in this country. Because it is so easy to make a change if you really show quality. You know, when I came here, you know, I was really so shaky that how can I really compete with the people who are Native American in the coming from our country who is very much named as enemy of America. But after a short time, my work and my dedication showed that the people of this country and the students are so fond of good education that they have accepted me and I have had a very, very good life here. But I'll go back to the past 30 years of Nino's growing up, being an elementary student. Before elementary, that was one of the funnest things for me was to drive her to kindergarten and take her from the kindergarten to bring home and go to the parties, birthday parties of Nino and her friend. It was, for me, was a full-time job. <laughs> I was enjoying it. I was enjoying it because I really, when I look at my life, I have my publication and my reputation, my CV shows that I have a successful life. But I think the greatest success I had in my life was having a daughter. <laughs>
this past November. Uh, my husband and I.
Um, look, I, I grew up in this movement in the, in the 90s, and Joanne knows this, back when bipartisanship was cool, uh, and uh, you know, people, you have governors who wanted to become education governors, and there was alignment at the federal level to close the achievement gap, to give more money to states, to serve the needs of low-income students in exchange for accountability. Back then, the reform movement could actually sit at a table. I know, Rick, you want to have a table. This table is much larger now, but it was easier to get things done because the table was smaller. Um, but you know, I, I believe that movement at that moment is going to come back again, and we just need to be ready when it comes back to make sure that charter schools are the key seat at that table, and I know that this organization will be able to do that. I didn't come to this work because I had read Milton Friedman's books or believed in his theory of action. I was not a teacher you know, through TFA. Uh, my entry point to this work was through a public interest law firm that litigated on behalf of low-income families who wanted access to better schools. Mark remembers where I worked. That's, yeah. um, and for me, fundamentally, and this is partially connected to my own family, I just thought you know, the fact that in many instances, these families were literally across the street from a good school they could send their kids to but couldn't because of a residential assignment was just wrong. And I just was like, how could you, if education is the ticket to the American dream, how could you not just like figure out a way to fix this? And so um, I started with private choice and other forms of public choice, but I truly backed into charter schools because I believe it to be the only way to create new public schools. The energy that the new people bring to this enterprise, and I know we need more of them, is crucial if you want to open access to more options to families. And I know that this organization, uh, through advocacy and through its leadership, will be able to do that. Um, and then on one final note, since Ron talked about family, I was at Candace's house. Candace works for Arthur Brooks. She's standing there. Raise your hand if you need Arthur to speak at your conference. <laughs> recently, and uh, everyone in that house apparently had read his book. But Arthur Brooks uh, believes that there are four pillars to a happy life, and they include uh, faith, family, friends, and work. And I'm not a spiritual person, um, but I believe that my work has been my religion, and through that I have met a lot of friends who have also become my family. So I consider my personal life a happy one because I've been able to kind of flip Arthur's equation on its head uh, to create a fulfilling life. And I want to just thank all of you for helping me um, have one of the most meaningful jobs on the planet. And I will probably and hopefully continue to be involved with you in a different capacity soon. Thank you. Thank <laughs> you.